back to this week's, but welcome back to my reviews of Bates Motel. Holy shit. That fucking episode, oh my god, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. I couldn't look away. Last week's, like I said, had some slower parts. It was just, you know, we're giving you a breather because we're really going to start giving you shit, some shit right now. It's starting to get really serious. We're not holding any punches. It's time for shit to get real. Um, first of all, this is becoming, and has been, one of my favorite series on TV right now. And po quite possibly one of my favorite TV series, especially in, the, in this kind of, this genre, this, you know, dark drama. Um, probably is becoming one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Now, some of you may not agree with that last statement, but I am so hooked. When I first heard about it, I was like, you know, this is going to either be really good or it's going to totally be so god-awful and ridiculous and, you know, just be so bad in abomination. Uh, I didn't see it going in the middle, in the middle ground, but... I was not expecting it to be this good. From the moment it started, even though at first I was like, you know, still at first I was like, okay, this looks good. It could go either way. It just kept getting better and better and better and better and better. And that's really hard for any show to do. A lot of times you go back and forth. You'll be really good and then you'll be bad and then you'll be good. You'll be bad, by la yada, yada, yada. And yes, it's had some episodes that are weaker. But for the most part, it's really excelled. It's really gotten so damn good. One of those really mushy shows, so addicting to me. And even like when I I don't work tomorrow, luckily, so I'm gonna be able to see the season finale. But usually I'm working, and I rush home. I have to see it. It's one of those things. Holy hell! But I'm so you know. We're get, I'm so glad we're getting a season three of it because I know they cannot put everything in this one final episode. And they did. They really crammed too much and it wouldn't be as good. And I'm expecting it to be good. But, like I said, they won't be able to do everything in the last episode. At least I don't I don't see them doing it legitly and in a good way. So thing, there's so much going on that we have to have a third season and we are. And... I'm sure it'll be a while before we get the third season, because it usually is. It's usually a, a big gap between seasons. And it'll probably be next year, or very, very, very late this year. But it's going to be so worth the wait. Uh, the anticipation level for me, for me, personally, is up there with the new episodes, a new season of Doctor Who. So, that's saying quite a bit. But anyway, let's get into review of this spectacular episode. One of the best episodes yet. Possibly the best episode yet. So much happened. So much was done so damn well. I'm going to try to not be too jumbled in this review. I'm trying to saw on um, at certain points and stick with them. But if my mind goes somewhere and all the excitement, it goes there. Freddie Highmore did an excellent damn job as Norman in the box. He was panicky. He was screaming. He was upset. He was terrified. And he played all these scenes off so well. It was shot very well. But it was always in the dark, in that blue, tinny kind of dark that really works for this series and really works for those kind of settings. Um, I loved it when he was reciting, his, whether he made it up or some kind of poem or, or saying or quote about, you know, the everyday guy and the John Doe. That was excellent. It was not to see Norman really trying to calm himself down that way. And Highmore did a great job with executing that. 
and going back and forth between, you know, between, you know, panicking and banging on it to, you know, okay, I have to calm down, I have to be calm, I can't panic, I can't waste my energy. Um, you could tell by his facial expressions and just this, the way he looked, he was completely terrified. Facial expressions and expressions in general are very key to an actor or actress. And he does these so well. I went on and on and on and on about his blackout stare, which I completely love. But, I mean, you could tell that he was terrified. Even if you didn't see what happened, and you just kind of saw him in a scene where he was looking like that, you would know something's wrong. Of course, we saw everything. That's what it was meant to be. But I just wanted to make that point really quick. Um, I'll get to the big reveals later on in that point. But, one of the things I'm liking, but... I'm not liking where it may end up, and just let me explain what I mean here. I'm really liking how Emma, and Olivia Cook is a really great actress, I'm really looking forward to seeing her in more stuff. She plays Emma so well. She's that really caring, nice person who's gone through a lot, but she really doesn't let her get her down. But at the same time, when enough is enough. It is enough. And in this episode, she plays it off really well. You can see the stress really building in her. And again, her expressions and her actions, uh, she plays them off very well to help you understand this. She's tired of all the secrets being kept from her. She's tired of being lied to. She's tired of not being kept in the loop. And this is because she cares. If she didn't get this shit, she'd keep the job. And want to say a word about it, just you would never would ask about anything. Um, but Rebecca, she's first. Uh, Norma is asking about Norman, asking where he is, and the way she's acting, Emma can tell something's wrong. And then Romero asks about him, and she knows something's up. She's not stupid. She knows something is up, and everybody's keeping secrets for from her. <laughs> Sorry, and she just fed up. Romero tells her when she is a little, kind of a little, you know, it wasn't really a freak out, just an outburst of, you know, she's tired of it. She's upset. You know, why is everybody treating me this way? And uh, Romero, of course, can't say anything about what's going on, so he just tells her, you know, you need to get some fresh air. And she just, maybe I should. So she knocks on the door, and Norma answers. And this scene is really damn good, too, because... While she's upset, she's, like I said so many times, she still cares. She's very sweet and kind to Norma about leaving. But at the same time, she tells her straight up why she's leaving. She explains it. She tells, you know, this is my two-week notice, and this is why. Really well acted. Really love her character. Like I said, I'm looking forward to see, uh, seeing Olivia in more roles. Of course, she's not always going to be Emma. But I'm definitely excited to see it in more roles, and honestly, Emma's probably going to be my favorite, and definitely my top favorite roles of whatever she does from here on out. But, I like how they're doing that. I like how Emma's getting away from everything, because it's causing her way too much stress. We've already seen what's happened to her. This different path she's gone down... And this dark path, you know, this stuff that's going to get her in big trouble. We still don't know what's going on with Gunner at this point. We don't know. We, we can guess that they're still together, but we don't know what all this is going to lead to. So I'm glad she's getting away, but I'm really hoping this doesn't take her character away. I still hope she has, sorry again, interaction with Norma, Norman, and everybody else. Because I'll be so upset if she leaves. You know... Take Bradley away. Take um, Cody away. That's fine. They won't be missed as much as Emma. Keep Emma. Totally have to keep Emma. But one other thing that I thought was really well done this episode, well acted, you know, the, the dialogue and the interaction between Norma and Romero were really good. Norma is so panicked about it, about what's going on with Norman. Ford tells her that she can't tell anybody, can't tell Romero, Romero 
or that he will know about it, and then Norman is going to be dead. So, um, I, you know, I'm really liking seeing this mortal duality, like I've been saying of Romero. Of he kind of does what he has to do, and a lot of it is off the books. A lot of it is violent. A lot of it is going beyond normal boundaries. And I'm liking how he's really trying to figure it out exactly what went on, why Norman Sample was found in Blair Watson. He meets the one guy, and I'll get back to him, him and Norma, Norma in a minute, but he meets the one guy that was his father's ex-partner, and he wants him to get Norman to take a polygraph test to see if he's lying, and that's what eventually gets him to approach Norma. He has to tell Norma, he's like, you know, there's no delicate way to put this, he tells what's going on, because he has to, it's at the point where he has to, because, um, you know, it's very important that he talks to Norman. And I like the interactions. I like how Norma's trying to keep it hid. And she's, for the most part, she's calm about it. Still panicky, but calm about it. You know, she tells me he's sick. He, she plays it off. Well, you can still, you can still tell that there's something not, not right there. You can still, still tell that she's not telling the whole truth. But it, it's well done. And eventually, you know... He comes in, and he's like, you know, I've had enough, I have to see him. He busts through the door. I love how he says, he's Norman's like, you can't do this. He's like, we'll call somebody. So she eventually, um, finally does have to tell him what's going on. And this was a really good scene. Really well acted. The way it was shot, the dialogue, just the interaction between the characters was really well done. I like how Norma said that, you know, I trust you. She does trust Romero. And that, excuse me, is a good point. He is a trustworthy person for something like that. Maybe not in everything, but because, you know, like, he does what he has to do. And often, like I said, it's stepping beyond the boundaries. But he says he'll take care of it, and he rushes out the door. And I like it. I love the interaction. I love how it's just so, you know, that matter-of-factly. You know, I trust you. I'm going to take care of it. This is what's going to happen. You know it's going to lead to something. Romero is going to do something in the next episode, which is tomorrow's episode, of course. And I'm so looking forward to that. So it really builds, out the, builds up the excitement and the tension and everything for it. And I think really I'm going to see more of Romero and what he's doing. But why is he so determined to figure out what happened? I'm wondering about that. I think part of it is his good guy persona, his good side that really wants to find out what happened and seek some kind of justice to it, even though he is sweeping in a lot of it under the rug. But there is something else there beyond that. And I think at least part of it will be revealed tomorrow night. So, let's talk a little more. No, let's talk about Dylan. Dylan and Zane. Um,. One thing I noticed about Dylan, and I've, I've always known, but it really was made, and my mind really caught on to it this time, was in all situations, he's very calm. He's very calm, cool, and collected. Or cool, calm, and collected, whichever way it goes. And when Norma goes to him, this is one of the only times you see some kind of panic set in. He doesn't act on it. He doesn't freak out. But again, expressions, you can tell he's worried. You can tell he really doesn't know what to do. But he still maintains this cool demeanor. And, you know, he goes to the sister, finds out where Zane is. He goes to try and kill Zane. And the tension in the scene with him and Zane were, was great. Zane knew what he was there for. Or at the very least suspected it. Or suspected the possibility you could tell that Zane was maybe somewhat afraid. He's definitely pushed into a corner and he's going to react. And you could tell uh, Dylan was a bit afraid. His cover was blown. But just the tension between the two and, you know, Zane taking the gun away and grilling uh, Dylan about why he was there. And his subtle warning about, you know, if you choose her over me, you're going to be in trouble. Things are going to get problematic, or, or however he said it. 
and that is really going to build up a lot of tension, you know. You could, re it was, you know, shot well, the music really helped build up the tension. A lot of, from where this show gets how good it is, is the blend of the music, the way it's shot, the dull or the dim lighting, and of course the character acting, their expressions and everything. And all of that really does well in this episode. You know, they're just looking at each other and they're on two opposite sides at this point, Dylan and Zane. Uh, and that scene was so well done. And of course, Zane, he doesn't kill Zane. And that's understandable because he was against so, against so many odds that if he tried, he even if he was able to kill Zane, he'd get killed himself. He goes forward and he explains to him what happened. And I did not see this coming until until about this part. Like, oh my god, I think I know what's going to happen here. Um, Ford gets up and he kind of, he's like, let's go. We're going outside. He has a gun. He's taking Dylan outside to obviously shoot him. And Dylan fights back, knocks him down, grabs a fire poker, and kills him with it. He doesn't mean to. He's trying to defend himself, but he's shaking him like, you know, where is Norman? Where is Norman? Where is Norman? Because this is what made him go to Zane. Norman is his brother, and he cares very much for him. He's stuck in such a strange, in a horrible dilemma. You know, is either kill Zane or let Norman die. He doesn't. He knows the rep repercussions are that will happen from killing Zane, and he's definitely thought of killing Zane. You can definitely see that working in his mind throughout the last few episodes, but. He's all of a sudden forced to do it. He doesn't do it, of course, because he can't. But he ends up killing Ford. And that's great. It does give a little, make some point pointless in a way. But I'm also glad that they went that route because as I was starting to like Ford more, it's good to get him killed. It's good to see what that's going to lead to. If he is dead, I doubt he's faking, so I'm sure he is dead. But, um, let's finish up with Norman and everything that happened there. The twist at the end, um, I re one thing I really liked was during his first blackout. And he acted that so well, he was, he was, you know, trying to get out, banging on the coffin, or the box lid. And he kind of calmed down a bit and went into this trance state. And was like, <laughs> he slowed down and he kind of wound down. And he really did well with that. And you saw where Norma was talking to him in his, in his dream state about how she'll always be there. And that was really kind and sweet, but also really morbid in that weird way, in that weird relationship and that bond they have. One of the things that I liked, but it's also made somewhat pointless by uh, Ford's death, is when Norman tries to escape and they found the, um, the pearls that he had that were Blair Watson in the newspaper article. They bring that to Ford, but first they show it to Norman, so now Norman knows Norman knows that Ford has to know, and at this point he doesn't know that Ford is dead. And of course, Ford being dead is what kind of makes it pointless, because, um, at least for now, but I'm sure they could do something with it. It's really well written, so I'm sure they could do something with it. But for now, and I've got to wrap this up soon, because I don't know how much long my camera has. Um, for now, we don't know what that's going to do. We know that Ford knows, we know that Ford is dead, we know that... Uh, Norman doesn't know that Ford's dead, but he knows that Ford knows. So I'm really interested to see what that goes with and what they do with that. But the biggest reveal is that apparently Norman did kill Blair. We saw that you know he was he was he got with her. They started getting intimate, and he Norman Norman says you know you knew what you have to do, and he takes a knife and slits her throat. Damn it someone's in the air, I don't know, but, um, he, you know, he washes off the knife and he flees, but this is the first time he's realizing what he did, he did, in the box, he goes to that second blackout, and it, this is all revealed to him as well as the audience, and that's pretty much where it ends, you know, 
Romero's going to take care of some stuff. We know that um, Ford is dead. We know that um, Norman apparently did kill, kill Blair. And all of it's going to boil up in this final episode. And I know they're going to leave on a cliffhanger for the third season. So really damn good so far. Really impressed. I love this damn show. Peace out.